Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. I think Ed's left me maybe 30 seconds left uh, to talk to you today. <laughs> I'll, I'll speak all the way through the panel then. Um, so we were um, the first operator in Europe to go onto the, uh, onto the operator tier. That was about a year ago, so I'm going to share with you some of the experiences we've had in the last 12 months. First of all, a little bit about who we are. Um, Teller2 merged with ComHem uh, at the back end of last year. Uh, and combined, we are the number two player in Sweden uh, behind Telia. Um, under the ComHem brand, we have the biggest cable network in Sweden. And we're the only operator on DTT under our Boxer brand. And combined, we can approach 3.1 million households. And we've got over a, a million TV customers. So in Swedish terms, we're a, a, a big operator. And our goal is to offer our customers the best possible um, experience, and we want to give them the best possible TV experience underneath. And back in 2013, that answer was TiVo. Um, at the time, it was, and it still is, the best traditional way to watch TV. Um, but as Sasha was talking about and the other, uh, other presenters, Customers' viewing habits uh, are shifting and moving forward, um, and the old TiVo platform is no longer fit for purpose. We need something that's modern, on-demand, app-centric for our customers. So we made uh, an award-winning decision to launch the Android-based uh, TV hub in Sweden. Going into it, we made uh, a couple of important uh, principled decisions. The first was that it would be network and brand agnostic. So we wouldn't create one box for the ComHem brand to work in the coax network, another one for Boxer in DTT. We'd have one box, a hybrid box, that would work in coax, DTT, IPTV, and it'd work in OTT so customers could take it to their summer home with them. We also made the decision that we wouldn't do a completely bespoke back-end build. From a network perspective, this would just be like any other multi-screen device connecting to it, but we wanted to have complete control over the UI that the customer was, was landing into. And this is a big shift compared to the old TiVo platform we had, which was basically a parallel um, TV platform inside the business. On a similar note, we wanted it to be standards-based. We had a lot of debates internally about um, whether to try and create our own UI, whether to part with Android or other providers. But when you're in a market the size of Sweden, it just doesn't make um, sense to go, uh, to go it on your own. Um, so we could be quicker to market, but we also get access to all of the great stuff that happens in the Android TV development um, roadmap. And we get access to the pool of developers who are used to building these around, uh, around the world. And lastly, we decided to be bold. Um, we decided to embrace the open app store and all of the content um, that customers are purchasing, not directly from us, rather than fight that trend. And we decided to be bold when it came to um, the user experience. We got rid of the traditional numbers um, on the remote control. We ditched booting straight into the EPG. We heroed voice control as the primary way of finding the content that customers wanted to get access to. And as a result, it's picked up many industry awards. At the same time, we weren't just developing a new TV platform. We also implemented a completely new way of working and implementing these kind of projects based on a safe methodology. And there are three important um, elements to this. Firstly, we had a really um, core business team um, focused on the MVP. I was the business sponsor of the TV Hub. We had Thomas, who's our CTO, um, on that panel. And in the early stages of the project, we were ruthless with what the scope would be for our minimum viable product. So we did a lot of the, the hard negotiating, which you normally end up doing throughout the project. We did that up front, so we went into the project with clear expectations. Secondly, and probably most importantly, we adopted big room planning meetings, which we held every, uh, every six weeks. In those six weekly meetings, we'd get everyone, internal, external stakeholders, Technicolor who were developing the platform, sorry, it wasn't Aris this time around, 
3SS who developed uh, the UI in partnership with us in a room working through what needed to be done in the next six weeks. This really was a revelatory way of us working. Um, no one was allowed to leave the room until we had consensus on what we were doing in those, um, those next six weeks to move the project forward. Uh, if we didn't have agreement, people would be back in the room the next day until we had a plan. And thirdly, and almost as importantly, we had demos back um, of the product every couple of weeks. In previous set-top box projects I've been involved in, you normally get a, a list of critical bugs and errors, and you get a status report, which is highly subjective from the project managers. Here, we could physically see the product. We could see how the UI was developing. We could see the impact and the stability of the, the product firsthand. And that fed back right up to the key stakeholders uh, at the top of the chain. And we could make steering decisions very quickly if we needed to escalate anything, if we needed to reprioritize whether the product was good enough to proceed to the next stage. And this enabled us to launch in, uh, in record quick time. So we kicked off the RFP back in December 2016, um, but we didn't properly get started until we got board approval uh, in April 2017. Um, as soon as we got started, we went into the big room planning sessions and we had an internal test version ready by October of that year and we were, had a full launch product in April. So 12 months from initial approval through to launch, which is quicker than I've seen these projects um, happen before, and it's only possible down to um, the, the new methodology uh, that we implemented. It's been so successful for us, we're not only using this methodology for um, the future developments to the TV hub, we now use it for everything, broadband, um, anything that we change in the business. So that's the sense of um, what we wanted to accomplish. I'm now going to show you a quick video with the end result. Our vision was to develop the first TV box in Sweden that provides seamless and content immersive user experience that brings all entertainment together in one place. We've built a Swedish Android TV setup box that enables all kinds of relevant entertainment with an endless flow of content experience. We prioritize our customers' needs, so we've designed a simplified user experience available whenever and wherever. We call it TV Hub. Comham TV Hub is among the first in the world to provide a custom-designed launcher application that builds on the operator tier version of the Android TV ecosystem. TV Hub featured with advanced voice interaction and 4K quality, all there to meet our customers' expectations. Comham, more powerful experiences. So it's a pretty exciting looking product, uh, I hope you'll agree. Um, 3SS, our partner on developing the app, they've actually got a copy of the TV Hub um, up in the coffee room. So if you have a chance to check it out, please do, uh, please do swing by. So that was 12 months ago. Um, how's it been going since then? And in order to answer that, I have to tell you about the five key objectives that we had for the project, and I'll tell you how we're doing against each of those. First, we wanted to, and most importantly, we wanted to improve customer satisfaction. We wanted to have higher MPS scores for the TV hub than for our traditional um, TiVo platform. Secondly, we wanted to drive adoption among um, both new and existing customers to get it into as many houses as possible. Thirdly, we wanted to have complete control over the customer experience and be able to make rapid changes to it. We obviously wanted it to be much more cost efficient and much simpler organizationally. And finally, we wanted it to be more digital. We wanted customers to be able to buy it more easily online and be able to support themselves online rather than having to call into our customer services. So starting with satisfaction, um, how is it doing? The short answer is um, it's behind where we want it to be. But the most important thing is we understand why. Um, so this chart here shows you the gray line at the top is TiVo, which is still our most satisfied customers. Um, but already the TV hub uh, has a higher MPS score than our, um, our legacy TV box. 
And why is that? We have got feedback from um, the MPS uh, verbatim comments. We've done focus groups and follow-up studies. And our customers give us feedback that there's five things that they want to see improved. Firstly, uh, some of our customers are missing the PVR functionality. We don't have network PVR um, rights in Sweden yet. Um, we made a conscious decision when doing the MVP to de-scope uh, the PVR and focus on getting the core product as good as possible before adding the complexity on top. We also see um, feedback on the picture quality and delays. In particular, um, people are um, uh, using the box over OTT um, and not connecting it to the cable. It's one of the great features about the box, but because it works without someone plugging in the cable, they're doing so at times when they get a much better experience with the cable plugged in. So we need to educate customers better how to set it up but also make our streaming platform better so that they don't see such a noticeable difference, no matter what network connection they have. We've had stability issues. Um, uh, we've had um, bugs, crashes on the box, um, which is to be expected with any platform. We've had a few more um, than we would have liked, and we're working on addressing them. We've had feedback on the UI um, and the UX uh, as well from our customers. Um, the majority of customers love the modern, on-demand way of watching TV. But some, in particular the more traditional TV viewers, have found it such a leap from having the channel numbers on the remote control and the traditional programming guide to the new, modern, on-demand focused world. <coughs> and lastly, when you sell customers a 4K-enabled box, they expect to have lots of 4K content. Um, in Sweden, we're a bit behind um, other markets having access to this content. Um, but there's more to come there. So that's MPS as a whole. The main objective, though, of the TV Hub was getting customers more engaged with on-demand content, and we can see that it's working so far. If we compare the TV Hub to TiVo, customers are properly engaging with SVOD content, proper box sets on demand, compared to TiVo, where customers are more... Um, watching, catch up, start over, basically time shift um, functionality. We also see this trend when it comes to TVOD. Um, customers on the TV hub are accessing more transactional VOD than a TiVo customer. And this really comes down to putting on-demand content in a content-rich environment, adding the advanced search and recommendation tools and bringing that all together and making content discovery so much easier. And what we can see from our MPS data is that when we get customers engaged with on-demand content, they're much more satisfied and much more, um, much more sticky in the longer term. So this bodes really well for the future of the TV Hub. In terms of um, sales, um, we see a roughly a 50-50 split between demand from new and existing customers. Um, so far, we're relatively satisfied with sales. We would like more existing customers to, uh, to take up the service. One of the challenges we've found is um, once you're talking to a customer um, in person or on the phone and you have the time to explain how great it is, it's really easy to get them excited about it and sell them the, the, the service. However, in particular through digital channels where we're sending out emails to our customers, it's really difficult to convey just how much of a step change forward this service really is, and it's something which we're, we're still working on. In terms of demographics, um, as you would expect, being a SVOD-focused service, um, the average um, age of the user is younger. What I find surprising, though, is that it's still fairly, fairly old at 43, 43 years old. And the feedback that we get from our customers is um, younger demographics really like that it's on-demand focused, more relevant to them. Older demographics love the ease of navigation, in particular features like voice control, once they get used to, to using it. They don't have to worry about which of the, which 10 menus the on-demand program they're trying to find is hidden in. They can just talk directly to the remote control. So that covers off um, points one, two, and five. In terms of control over the customer experience, this has been the biggest um, leap forward that we've taken. Um, 
With the new, um, uh, new setup um, that we have, we can make changes um, every couple of weeks if we want to, to the UI um, and the experience. Um, and we have complete control of changing absolutely anything that we want to um, uh, within that app. If we contrast that to the old TiVo platform we had, we were very restricted in terms of what changes we could make. You basically have to stick to uh, the template you've, you've got. And you could make changes maybe once a year, and it would be relatively, uh, relatively expensive. Now we have access to the developers ourselves, and we continue to iterate and make improvements um, all the time. And that also ties into point four. It's much more cost efficient as we have a pool of developers who we can draw on, and we can make those changes um, directly ourselves. So overall, we're very happy with how the TV Hub's been performing. Lots of areas that we can improve on, but we have the tools in order to continue to make those uh, improvements. So what next for the TV Hub? Firstly, we're working on launching uh, the PVR version. Um, there's a picture of the actual um, PVR version which we'll be launching. Um, every TV Hub customer will be able to plug and play upgrade to a PVR. Uh, and that will be coming soon. We've deliberately delayed the launch of the PVR version to make sure we focus on the stability and getting the core UI right, first of all. We're also very excited about what's coming up in the Android roadmap. Um, Google Assistant in Swedish is going to make um, voice search much more, uh, uh, much more enriched. And we'll also start to tie into the rest of the smart home. Equally as important, Android P, which will come around the, the summertime, um, is going to give us uh, a much more stable product, um, which our customers have been asking for. We're working on getting more 4K content, but is um, dependent on us uh, negotiating that with our, our providers. And lastly, and most importantly, we have this continue, continual focus on improving the UI and navigation. The key thing which we're working on at the moment um, is feedback we've had from our customers that they love the on-demand um, rich environment, but that we've gone too far with simplifying the linear experience. The feedback we've had is they want to see more channels side by side and have um, uh, uh, greater visibility of what's coming up um, later on the channel. So we're working on a prototype at the moment to improve um, the linear broadcast viewing experience. Uh, and the beautiful thing about our new way of working is we don't have to get the perfect UI ready um, because we only get one shot at developing it. We can get it so it's a pretty good minimum viable product. We'll put it live. We'll continually get feedback from our customers and make improvements every couple of weeks until we get it as good as possible. So that's a little flavor uh, of what we've uh, experienced in the last 12 months. And thank you very much for listening.